First of all, I wanted to say a huge, huge apology, a sincere apology for disappearing off the face of the earth for about the last six weeks. To be perfectly honest, things have been so, so busy um, that I really just haven't had time to record, upload and edit videos. About six weeks ago, that was just as I was about to sell the property that I was in recording some of my last videos. And part of what I do is renovating houses and that house went onto the market and it actually sold a lot quicker than I was expecting. And we've now moved to Chester since then. Uh, at the same time as selling my house, I was buying another property, uh, the next one that I'm due to renovate. And my girlfriend, she was actually selling her flat and also buying another house separately in Chester as well. So we have both simultaneously sold a house and bought a house and with all of that going on, there's been an awful lot to do. She's been getting windows fitted, doors fitted, there have been dust sheets everywhere. For the first two weeks of moving, we didn't have any internet connection at all. Then we went away to Turkey for a week, so I'm going to upload some videos of that. We stayed at the Regnum Carrier Hotel, played at the Carrier National, where they host the Turkey uh, Open and also we played at the National a couple of times as well. One of the other things that's kept me really busy is in moving over to Chester, I had to very, very quickly resign from my old club, which was the Manchester Golf Club at Hopwood, and I've now joined at Eton for the time being, um, which is a fantastic golf course, which is where I'm at at the moment, so if you haven't seen it before, do check it out. I'll put a link in the description box below. Really, really good value club. USGA greens, a really good length, great test of golf. It's uh, a Parkland course and it was designed by Donald Steele. Now, if his name means anyone, anything to anyone, um, you'll know that the greens uh, are going to be forming some of the main defence of the course. And so for me, to practice my putting, it's been absolutely superb. As far as my competitions are concerned, I started the season on 5.6, I'm now on 5.7, so I'm actually going in the wrong direction. As soon as I joined Eton Golf Club, within the first week, I ran out onto the golf course into the first competition I could because I missed playing in competitive golf and it was a mistake because I wasn't ready. I had a bit of a shocker, I think I shot about 11 or 12 over par and obviously that was outside buffer so I came up by 0.1. I've played a couple of other competitions since then and I've played two or around my handicap, made buffer, so that hasn't been a huge issue. We noted in the lesson that really some things in my swing had gone backwards. So where previously I had loads of time to get to the range, really embed those swing changes, the way that he described it is that I was just borrowing them, I wasn't owning them. It really highlights the fact that I'm, I'm just clinging on to my handicap, I'm not making great strides to playing below it and therefore reducing it. And so really that's the point of today's video is just to talk about the fact, uh, the amount of practice that I need to do, sort of 10 hours at least, uh, five of which especially per week need to be on the driving range, and then the short game and the putting, you know, in the other five hours, that's outside of actually playing practice rounds of golf. I feel like there's a huge amount of stuff that I need to share with you guys. I need to get back onto the swing by Saturdays and talk about actually where I am in the swing, what changes I'm making, what's been working, what hasn't been working in my practice. I want to look at my practice routine as well uh, and talk about how I warm up for a round and, and what my swing thoughts are before going out onto the course and how I manage my way around the course. Um, and so yeah, there's just a huge amount for me to catch up on. So let's take a look and see how I got on and I'll catch up with you afterwards. Can you see that in my follow through, I'm, I'm sticking to this really sort yeah. of like held off punch Big time. sort of follow through? Now I actually really like that for controlling the ball, right? Yeah. With your hands. But what I'm seeing here though, mate, is if you have a look at this, your left shoulder's not getting across and behind the ball as much as I'd like it to. So can you see how you're kind of yeah. leaning a bit forward? Yeah. Now your problem will be is that you're going to have to back out of that at some point because you haven't got behind the ball enough. And once you need to be behind the ball tons, this shoulder needs to get across a little bit more that way. So if we can get that shoulder across it a little bit more towards that top of the backswing, so the shoulder's getting more behind the ball. As you can see now, that lead shoulder right here is very much over. So in the last few weeks, while I've been working on other things, that has slid. I mean, you look how well your shoulders start to clear. Yeah. 
I'm still actually not keeping my head back as, as much as I have been either. I don't think you can do from when you're forwards. No. Okay? No, you're and, right. And you need your pelvis then just to push up towards the sky a little bit more that way through the ball. So look from down the line. Playing with the backswing looks great. Just add a bit more hip rotation to it. See, there's not enough hip turn there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But the rest of that will through the ball look really good. Yeah, so get that deeper hip turn, get the left shoulder more behind the ball. And get that working again properly. But I need to. Is that better there? Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Right, so. Turn the hips a little bit more back if you can, please, mate. I was, I was really warming up and stretching my hips out, but I think it's just a bit tight. I was, yeah, it felt it felt better um, in terms of the deep hip turn. Um, feel like I'm just repeating the same thing every time we have a lesson. Feel like I'm getting that left shoulder back behind the ball. You're right, I was falling ahead of it. What, right, what you need to understand though is, right, okay, as you're moving on to new things as well, mate, is, so yeah, you probably do feel like you're repeating things a little bit, but what you need to understand is, as you're moving on to things, other things that you have done in the past but not necessarily owned, which are the deep root rooted things of, if I don't get these, what else is going to go off on the back of it? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. So it's just, it's just repeating them until they are literally second nature. Yeah. And we've moved on a little bit to some newer things, haven't we? But I'm, I'm still not quite. It's just, it's just adding this bit back into it, and everything will start to fit beautifully. Yeah. And then you can get your pelvis up to the sky a little bit more through the wall. Turn that hip a little bit more backwards in the in the back in the right. There you go, way better. Do it again, mate. Yeah, you see that that feels like right at the limit of my okay. flexibility at the moment. I was doing some squats and deadlifts a few days ago, and I think just a little bit tight. Now, let's feed just a little bit, because that's going to really make it easier to turn the hips. Are they too wide? They were then. Right, okay, because I wonder if I've maybe been having them too wide. That's better. That was a deeper hip turn, even though it probably could be deeper. Yeah. Um, I think I think I just am a little bit tight in the hips at the minute. Okay, um, so but the difference in that one was I cleared the left shoulder. That was a much better swing, mate. So your hip turn, do you have more hip turn you've got there? Yeah. That's tons better, mate. What I've been working on is this is really getting this this right elbow in yeah. so that I can then you know just rotate my body. Yeah. But I've been forgetting about the things that come before it. And then when I try and go back and remind myself of the things before, I then find I'm not able to do that. So I can only me personally I can only sort of keep two things in my head at a time. That's that's about my limit. That feel like that felt good. That was that was the deeper hip turn, balanced. It was a good strike going through. Yeah. And the the left shoulder really felt like it was clearing out the way. Yeah. That's a good ball flight as well. Yeah. We'll look so 155 yards, 88.9 miles an hour. Decent ball flight. Miles more behind the ball. Yeah, so it just took a couple of swings just to remind myself, didn't it, of getting behind the ball better. And then now that downswing's really fitting well with it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Now let's have another one like that, like really, really good. Is the work that I've been doing with the, my right elbow 
making any sort of difference. Are, are, are my arms still throwing away from my body? No, you're doing, you're doing really well. Are they doing better? Because I'm actually, I'm not able to think about that today. So, whatever I've been working on, it's just, it's just whatever I'm stuck with today, that's, that's what I've got. Yeah. Good position? Yeah. Why that a lot? The, the head's staying back, isn't it? Yeah. And the left shoulder's definitely clearing more. That was a fantastic move. Right, yeah. Let's have another one, please. one but better <laughs> it actually felt like um, well it, it was similar in the sense that I felt like I got the deep hip turn the left shoulder behind the ball um, I'm assuming that my swing is on plane going back with my wrist set and everything yeah um, it felt more like as I came through the ball I cleared the left shoulder but actually it felt as if the weight was more back on my heels so I was a bit more solid and then the fish felt a bit higher and I was leaning back a bit more. Yeah. Um, now I don't know if that's a positive thing or not. So what are you seeing as I'm coming through the ball? What, what are your thoughts with that impact position and so on? I like it. I'm liking the way you're already moving through the ball, Pete. I think you're moving through the ball really, really well, mate. I just think you'd slipped and not got behind it, you know? Yeah. And part of the stuff that you've been doing over the year now will be not necessarily jumping the swing miles forward over the silver. No. Okay? It's going to be, because it's now starting to produce pretty consistent results. I think next lesson you come in, I think I'd like to maybe just a quick bit on the swing and then go into some pitching. These first six lessons, and I was going to ask you about this, obviously what we've been doing is, is looking at my swing from start to finish. Yeah. We've not really sort of covered anything in my follow through. We've only sort of got up to the impact position, but everything that's happening after that, are you generally quite happy? Yes, I mean, at the moment, I'd like the pelvis a little bit more up to the sky at the finish, so i.e. the middle of your body here is a little bit more forward, so you'd be coming through a little bit more from that way as opposed to that way. I th I've right, so part I'm of that wondering if if my ankle is maybe so all a little bit. All, I'm do, all I want to do is I want to see how, also I've got to be aware of what the functional ball flight is. And yeah. most of the time you're aligning path and face really, really nicely, mate. Really? Okay, you're doing really well with it. So because you're doing well with that at the minute, my thought is, well, this ideally, yes, I could do with it a fraction more forwards, but that actually looks really good. So, right, let's see if we can get that, just getting that back swing together. Let's get it where we want it to. If we can push you there and you can do it comfortably, great. If you can't, no biggie, we just work around the ankles. But then it's a case of, right, what are we going to do now? So now, the season's very condensed and short, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You've got May, yeah, June, July, August, maybe September if we're lucky. And then you've got seven months to prepare for the following one. Yeah. Right? Pretty much. So you've got five months to be playing the best golf you can all the time. Yeah. So for me, now it's a case of, right, What's going to affect your performance the most? They say, right, you've slipped a bit there. We need to pull you back here, do that. Right, now the swing's looking a bit more like how we want it to. So, right, okay, if we can, let's say your best swing today, right, if we can just make that better mm -hmm. and get slightly more consistent results with that throughout the season, then we can look at what's your pitching like, what's it like with the drive, what's the shot shaping like, where's the areas here? Then we can look at the overall game from a performance standpoint. Shot shaping. Because we've at least got a golf swing that. Sorry, it's really, it's really, no, no, not so at all. We've at least got a golf swing there, but that is bringing you repeatable results. Yes, that yeah. that that was really the whole. That was the whole goal. Move to a fade, and get a mechanically reliable swing. No matter what the you know whether 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 I'm under pressure.
pressure or not. And the fact that I can do this slightly more sawn off finish, if it's very windy or if I'm struggling with my timing, at least I can kind of fall back on that. Yeah. So that, that keeps, me, keeps me going. Before, I had nothing to fall back on. Um, shot shaping. Yeah. Not happening at the minute. Okay. I'm, I'm struggling to, to just drill a repeatable I'm not expecting it baby to fade. Yet. Before I could shape my shots, yeah. but that, that was very much like timing hands feel. Yeah. I, could, I could just whip my hands over a little bit more if I wanted a draw. I could sort of cut across it a bit more if I wanted a fade yeah. with my old swing. Now, I, I, I actually genuinely don't know how to draw the ball using this new swing. Okay, and I haven't taught you that yet, so no. don't worry about it. <coughs> Let's just own the actual movement that gives us repeatable results. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget, Colin Montgomery became the greatest golfer Europe's ever seen in terms of winning order of merits by playing a fade. Yeah. Colin all day long. All day long. Yeah. So, and he managed to do it at, t at the tour where he was playing a variety of different golf yeah. courses that won pretty really like consistently. For because if you can hit the same shot every single time, you can adapt it to each hole. And as long as the ball isn't moving a lot. Yeah. As my, my mate in America said, so he, a friend of mine said, how do you see the ball move? Do you like draw, fade? He said, it fairly straight. He said, well, what? Do you not like to move it about on the course? He said, to be honest with you, he said, I've never played a golf course where a straight shot's a problem. <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. The nearer <laughs> I can get to, to a straight shot, but with a slight bit of fade for that control, so that, not, that's so exactly that's what I'm saying. So if we've got and that if I now, can't any longer ever draw the shot on demand, I'm actually, I'm not worried. Not how concerned. often do you need to hit a big slingy draw? Very rarely. Because if you that hole where you need to hit a big slingy draw, where well you could hit three out of the corner and seven iron in. Yeah. The big slingy draw might give you the opportunity for a wedge, but if you don't hit the big slingy draw, right, you might hit a double. And so this that is becomes it. A, so is that suddenly a course management issue, yeah. or is that a technical issue in your game? Course management. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. And and I'm changing my course management now around this theoretically more repeatable swing. Good. Because if I'm losing a bit of distance, which I feel like I am, but not yeah. by a huge amount, yeah. I'm just getting consistency. And if I know instead of going for this big uh, this big, the big drive to then try and leave myself a wedge, well, if I know that my seven iron and in is solid. If you nine iron them, what's the difference between an iron and a wedge? Exactly, so why, why take the extra risk just to, just to end up well, using the wedge? 10 yards is nothing. No, no. No, okay, I'm going to say something about coloured speed and distance in a minute. You're going to say what, sorry? Hang on. So it's a ball. Hang on. Get the shot first, I'll tell you. Don't keep telling me that, mate. Is it? Mm. Right, so. Um, what I would say is, right, distance is purely this. Do you have enough clubhead speed to play at the events and the courses and at the standard you want to be at? Absolutely. 100% yeah. you do. I'm not losing anything to anyone, really. No, you're not. So you don't need to look for that. No. So that's not an area for you. So almost distance isn't, any, isn't an issue. So what we need to look at is how we can make what you already do perform the best results it can. Yeah. And that, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. That's right, exactly. Let's have one, mate. <clears throat> because I, I could hit it further than a lot of people. Yeah. And I was stuck on five. Yeah. Where I, where I see and played with a couple of guys the other day, one, two scratch handicappers, they don't hit it as far as I do. Yeah. So so what's the difference? Why are they all scratch and why, why am I not? Well, it's because they can get the thing in the hole. And they, they're, they're consistent. And even if they're hitting, I mean, I played with this guy the other day who plays off three, and he's hitting a three hybrid into greens that I'm hitting like a seven, four, a six, or, or a five so iron into. Why shot better on you? And, and I know a lot of people say, oh, but it's easier to hit a seven iron into a green than it is a three hybrid. Well, it's not if you're spraying it around. Yeah, so if, if you're and if he can hit that three hybrid straight as a bullet every single time, and he's got the distance control with it, he knows how to hit it short, he knows how to hit it a bit further within his limits, well, he's got me over a barrel. And so basically, he's only straighter than you, isn't he? Yeah. So the distance is, is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. Um, I think... Nice, how that feel? Yeah, that felt really, really smooth. I've sort of warmed up into... Uh, 
the proper swing of it better now. I think guys who genuinely do struggle for distance, you know, like they're hitting driver, driver, driver off the deck of yeah. the tee, down the middle, down the middle, and they're still struggling to reach a par four in regulation, then yeah, they could probably do with a bit more distance. They're going to struggle to get a low handicap if they don't get a bit of extra distance. But for 99% of people, it's not, it's not about distance, is it? Not at all. Or if you're really elite, yeah. a bit of extra distance might give you a bit of an added advantage. Might. Where all else is equal. 100%. And it might. You're not definite. But then, but then you're relying as much on luck as you are that extra five yards. Because you, you might get a shit bounce. Yeah. So somebody who's five yards shorter might get a nice kick on and you might lip out and that's the difference. It's, it's irrelevant. Smooth as silk. That was really nice. <clears throat> Balanced. Nice strike. Shoulder clearing. Um. So definitely get more behind the ball. Hip turns great. Watch it from the front view here. Left shoulder's a lot more across. Definitely clearing that left shoulder out of the way. You're clearing around. Really good finish. Now it's fitting together very nicely mate. Now you need to start to own that because the way you're getting this right now, your last two shots have both carried the same distance, have both give you a little cut. So consistency wise, that's fantastic mate. You know, little cut, little baby cut, you know, face to path's great. Is that ideal? Happy. Good, right, let's do it again then. All we need to now do is get the last repeatable. Yep. Um, I found what I need to do is really work on my Warm up at the beginning of every round. And you need to find out what works for you. Yeah. Do you think, I think something that's dead interesting to do with that, and I think it's great for people. I think the PGA Tour put on the on YouTube have put all the different players' warm ups on there. Have they? Have you seen it? No. So the Jordan Speed one, no. Uh, Rory Rackleroy one. So you've got all this. <laughs> Rory Rackleroy. <laughs> So you've got Jordan Speed warm up routine. You've got Rory McElroy's, Jason Days, and they're all done by the PGA Tour. Phil Mickelson's, Adam Scott. So what you do is, the reason that I think these are really good is if you look at what this does, it gives you the you know the exact routine that they're doing most of the time. And they do use a routine. Yeah, so he arrives at the button area, so obviously they do it to like me. So you can, you can see, can't go right. So he starts with putting, does a bit of pudding, jump to, does that, well, marks off four feet. So it goes through the exact thing that he's doing. So he spends ages on the green. Then he goes over to the range. And at the range, it kind of goes through what he's doing there, off to the range, hitting chip type pitch shots, then he has some wedge shots, then he starts to move through the bag, finishes off with like woods up here somewhere, then he goes over to the chipping green there where he's chipping around, and it gives you the exact number of balls, 750, 60 degrees, boom, 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 and then you say, right, well what's McElroy's? So McElroy's will be different, so it's figuring out what works for you. We've got Tiger Woods's one. Adam Scott's. I think these are great. So you can then decide what yours is. Okay. Do, you, do you know what mine is? I'll tell you exactly what mine is. And it's, it, funnily enough, just watching that, it is almost identical to a tee to what Jordan Speed is doing. I will spend 30 to 40 minutes on the putting green. Because I'm, I'm not even really working on anything specific for the first sort of 20 minutes. I'm just rolling balls until my body tunes to how fast the green is running yeah once I've got that I will then do the sort of I'll do a ladder routine so I'll hit sort of a tap in from about two feet yeah then I'll hit another putt along the same line from four and then another putt along the same line from eight and I'll do that around the hole so I'm getting just a feel for different breaks and that sort of thing yeah and, and the feeling of actually getting the ball in the hole 
then I'll start to work on longer putts. And if there's a green where you've got a flag sort of 10 feet away, 20 feet away, 30 feet away, I'll hit one putt to the 10 foot, one to the 20, one to the 30. And then I'll start mixing it up so that I know that I'm, I'm automatically getting the right distance for each yeah. flag. Then I'll move on to the pitching green um, and I'll spend probably 30 or 40 balls, so maybe 20 minutes or something like that, hitting, a, 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 I'll probably stand about 20 yards away from the green. Yeah. And that, that gives me a shot of about 40 yards to the nearest flag yeah. and about 60 yards to the further, furthest flag. And I'll hit a low short one, then a low long one, then a high short one, then a high long one. And then I'll just, you know, mess around with that yeah. a little bit in between just to get a feel for different distances. Then I'll bring the ball a bit closer and do some little knock-ons, you know, just over the fringe. And then go to the other side and play them downhill to get a feel for how it's running out. And of course now I know how fast the green is running because yeah. of the putting green work. And then do you hit a ball? Then, yeah, then, then once I've warmed up with that, because that helps start get my swing, you know, yeah. going with the chipping. Um, and then I'll just get a bucket of maybe 20 balls or so and just, just literally just loosen up. Perfect. And that is that is my warm-up routine every time. So if you're doing that, then that's perfect. So right, let's have two more shots to finish with, mate. I think I turned my hand, my right hand over a little bit on that one, which is why the path is a bit further left. And that wasn't great. We'll do one more. Just focus on that back turn and hit turn left. Now so we're doing great today. Super. Great. Okay, Pete, so really good session today. So what we've been working on is from this front view is making sure that we are getting the idea of the hips rotating back whilst the shoulder is stretching across a little bit more. So having a look from here, we're getting back to that kind of idea uh, to incorporate, and that's really, really good. Then from here, you can get that lower body to start down. Left shoulder then clears out the way. Loads of room for you to deliver the club. Have a look from down the line. You obviously weren't quite turning the pelvis as much as we'd like you to in that back thing, but really got that looking excellent towards the end of the lesson. So that looks fantastic, mate. Then from here, got a load of room for the arms in front of the body, delivering the club around and consistently hitting a tight little cut, which has been absolutely brilliant. So just take ownership and making sure you're getting this back swing embedded. Down swing's looking great in terms of the way the shoulder's clearing out the way. Okay, just all you need to now do is just get those embedded in and then we can then start to look at how you can start to get a bit of shot shaping and what have you into this move. So guys, thanks very much indeed for watching. Please do give it a thumbs up if you liked it and of course please do subscribe in the last few weeks where I've not been making the videos. Obviously subscription numbers have levelled off a little bit which is my own fault. Um, what I would say, uh, no not what, not what I would say, cut. <laughs> We're heading off to Heswell Golf Club now because where we were at Eton just a minute ago we turned up and there was a men's open on which we didn't realise so So we're now turning left onto the A51 and uh, off to Heswell to go and have a practice round so see you in my next video thanks very much for watching again please do subscribe I'll see you soon take care